Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and I've gained so many new subscribers in the past couple of months and I thought it'd be nice to do an updated Q&A to see if what you guys want to know about me, anything, anything about me personally, about, I don't know, motherhood, about life, about productivity, about work, career, whatever. So I asked you guys both on YouTube and on Instagram to give me some questions and you guys gave me so many. So I'm gonna to try to be really quick with them um, and try to make this video not too long, but also try to answer as many as I possibly can. Someone asked, does the level of education or PhD you acquire make a difference in raising your baby? Now, this is a really good question. I never really thought about this, but I'm going to say yes, it does. Even though my PhD was nothing to do with child psychology, I think just having that sort of academic knowledge and sort of evidence-based knowledge makes me question everything. If someone says, um, do this thing, this will help your child, I don't know, crawl, let's say. Oh, right, I'll be like, okay. And then I'll look it up and I'll think about it and I'll kind of give it rational thought and time. If you look at, for example, the guidelines on weaning, they now say don't wean before six months. Whereas back in the day, not even back in the day, like 10 years ago, they used to say four months. And so why are these guidelines changing? Like kids are still kids, what has happened? And so it's really important for, you, for me, I feel like just to do my research. And I actually started weaning him around and I think it was four and a half, five months, just because I thought that was when he was ready and he had the neck control and I was more, I was confident with that. And I, and I definitely think having a PhD has made me question a lot um, in general. And I was very sort of like, I read so much when I was pregnant about pregnancy and things like that and labor. And I think had I not done a PhD, had I not gone into more education, I think I would have been sort of less um, sort of reedy <laughs> and less sort of academic in that sense. But that's not to say that if you didn't do a PhD, you can't be like that. It just depends on sort of you and your interest and how much you want to sort of delve into that side of things. Next is how do you have an effective approach to proofreading? Now, apart from obviously booking at thepagedoctor.com, um, there's three things I would say. Number one, read out loud. I find that reading out loud gets rid of pretty much ma the majority of your uh, lack of clarity issues. To do a spell check, it's the easiest, simplest thing. Just do a spell check. You'll find a lot of spelling mistakes. And then number three, use synonyms. I, when I first started proofreading and I wasn't sort of too confident with the different kind of words I could use, I would just search on synonyms.com and look for a word that was better than the word that I had used. And that alone made such a difference in the quality of my work. Um, but like I said, the better way would be to go to thepagedoctor.com and book yourself in ask how did you help your baby to crawl at such an early age um definitely giving him as much floor time as possible if you think about it like this for a baby to crawl they need to have like it's like I said, this is just me doing my evaluation right for a baby to crawl they need to actually have time to practice the same way that if you want to learn how to swim you need to be in the water if you learn how to ride a bike you need to be on a bike so the same way with a child if you want if they want to learn how to crawl they need to be on the floor so the best way is for them to have as much floor time as possible and um, just try to Kind of minimize the use of like bouncers chairs all that kind of thing they are very restrictive and in actual fact a lot of them are banned in a lot of countries another really good way is just by doing it yourself like the amount of times i was just on my hands and knees like just doing it because he could actually they can imitate you so he can see that the arm went first the leg went second the opposing arm went and just literally getting on your hands and knees and like doing it um really helped but lastly every child's different and whilst you can do all of that your child may not call till i don't know, I don't know when the latest time is but may not call for a year whatever whereas the early an early child may call at four or five months so i wouldn't worry too much but definitely try to give them enough kind of floor time um, to practice someone said sorry i'm just starting to follow you you are doctor for what <laughs> I don't know for what. A PhD in cancer biology, so my PhD was very, more specifically my PhD was looking at the acting cortex. It helps protect the cell, it helps to maintain cell shape, um, and also helps with motility of cells, which is again really important in cancer, sort of the proteins that nucleate the acting cortex, so the proteins that allow the acting cortex to um, form, if you like. So that was my PhD, and um, so yeah, I'm a doctor in the acting cortex. Life lessons you learn the hard way. Oh my God, this is a good question. Okay, I'm just gonna say one. Maybe I'll do a whole video about this. This is a good question. Um, money, save your money, sis. Invest your money and save your money. One thing I learned is, I think I learned it the very, very hard way, as in I spent thousands. Um, I only started saving, I would say, 
mm, probably during my master's first year PhD and I've saved like a really good amount now but when I think about how much money I just gone down the drain if your money put it into an ISA put it into stocks and shares put it into investments put it into Bitcoin whatever I think I've learned this a hard way um, like I said I lost thousands I can't account for thousands of pounds, like tens of thousands of pounds, I cannot account for. Um, so I would definitely recommend you to save your money and not just save it, but to invest it. And that's something I'm learning a lot about this year, last year. Something I'm learning quite a lot about, I remember hearing my parents talk about stocks and shares when I was growing up and stocks and this and shares and that. And I never, like, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know the value of knowing about that and actually putting your money into that kind of thing. But since like last year I've been thinking about it a bit more and looking into it a bit more and I've started to invest and um, into like a pension fund you can get an investment uh, trust fund for your child as well so I'll leave some links down below if you're interested but you can put in up to nine grand a year for your child and um, that will then build up and then when they're 18 they can take that out and they have a really nice pot of money um, that they can maybe buy a house put a deposit down for they can pay for uni whatever um, so that's definitely something that I'm learning the hard way but we're, we're, we're there how did you cope with breastfeeding i had two questions about this how did you cope with it do, are you still breastfeeding any tips whatever yes i i am still fully breastfeeding he hasn't had formula yet at all um he's currently nine months so i'm, I'm planning to i mean i, I want to do as long as possible in the beginning it was really tricky just trying to understand how it works like how often do i feed him how much does he have to feed has he had enough like everything it was a lot and i was quite full as well so it's really difficult for him to drink without just drowning in milk um, and it's quite in the beginning really tough I think but within a, I don't know maybe a couple of weeks we just settled down and it's absolutely fine it's been a breeze since then thank god because I know it's not as easy for everyone to say that one thing I did was <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy but I did something called colostrum harvesting google it I'm not gonna talk about it but um, I did something called colostrum harvesting before I had him so I think I started at like seven months um, yeah, that was it was great and um, I think it did help a lot with supply. That's what I mean about doing this research thing, like you Google everything and you try to do everything. But it was really good and you, I've got like loads of antibodies now in my freezer. Yeah, I think this is better, my hijab was annoying me. Um, uh, how did you shop for your boy since you didn't know his gender? Yeah, I didn't know his gender, I found out when he was born. <laughs> um, and I'm definitely not going to find out for my next children as well. I think it was such an exhilarating experience and I would highly recommend. You shouldn't really care what you have, so as long as it's a healthy baby, so um, yeah, it was nice not to know. I didn't shop that much, like I didn't get that much clothes for him before he was born. I just got the basic vests, um, sleep suits, that kind of thing. And I just got white, grey, like light browns, yellow. Um, so it's great because for my next child, um, I know that whether it's a girl or boy, I have got the clothes for it. So it was actually a pretty good deal. I'm also like not a huge fan of overly pink or overly blue or overly sort of genderized clothes. So I, I didn't really mind to be honest. Share your favorite recipes for bu for busy people. That's a good one. Um, I think like lasagna, I know that sounds like it's not easy, but it actually is in the long run. So you just make your meat sauce, simple. You just, then you put the layers up and then you can actually freeze them. So you've got lasagna in your freezer for, it's a little bit, a little bit of work, like maybe an hour or two work on that day. And then you've got lasagna in your freezer for a good week if you kind of have it every single day. So I find that a really good way of having food in my freezer at all times. And it's actually home cooked and it's good food. This is another good one. What part does religion play in your everyday life? Now, I don't talk about religion at all. Um, I don't think I've ever talked about religion on my channel. And I don't think I'll ever talk about religion on this channel just because um, it's, it has nothing to do with anyone. Um, it has, it's between me and God. So it's nothing that I need to discuss on this channel. This is a good question. What do you think is the best age to give birth if a woman wants a great career in STEM? There's two ways to this. You can either have a child really early and like just get it out of the way and then they are in full-time school and then you can like have your career or you can like wait until you're in your 40s have your child then and then just go with it like by that time you're already like a professor or you've got your tenureship or whatever um personally i i i personally wanted a family more than i want to the career if that makes sense so i think for me i didn't consider age i just thought i want a family let me have a family now things will work out how they work out that's fine so i didn't think right this is because right 
technically this is like the worst time for me to have a child career wise um you know i'm right i'm bang in the middle i'm like young i'm bang in the middle of my career i'm at the time when people are getting promotions and things like that but i'm out but i guess for me like that i don't care for that like that will come when it comes and if it was meant to come it will come regardless the career is still there it will always be there but having a child might not always be there so that's kind of i guess the stance that i've taken what future do you have for your youtube channel and business oh this is a huge question i'm again might do a video about this but it's doing a lot better than my job um and i get paid well and it's doing like double or triple so it's 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 very tempting to leave work and just go full time with the page doctors considering how flexible it is and how much i can scale it up but i also i love the security of having a nine to five i can take a sick day i can you know go on maternity leave like these things like business can just fall apart tomorrow i can have no orders tomorrow like it, you know that can happen so it's still early days so i think i'll have to be on this trajectory for like another year and then see how it goes and if it's still doing really well um because we're on track right now to be a six-figure business like if we keep on making the amount we're making every month we will do that by the end like by the end of this year and they're like i'm really happy for that but like i said that's this is just the first two months and there could be like bad months and i think i need to we need to just see how it is at the end of the year and then if it's at the point where we're like you know what we need one of us to go full time on it i'll probably go full time on it um so yeah hands up for it like i'm really really grateful that it has worked out the way it has and obviously youtube i'm still gonna be here like i'm still i love i love filming videos i love like creating content and all of you guys that come to the page doctor are coming from here so there's no way i can abandon <laughs> youtube there's no way that i can stop um, creating content i absolutely love it definitely be here for the next couple years how old were you when you got married i think i was 20 i was 25 no, i just turned 26 i think yeah i just turned 26 if i'm mistaken or 25 one of those two. I don't, I don't even know how old I am now, to be honest. To be completely honest. I had a question, but I just want to say that I love your content. Thank you. There are quite a few of those as well. Who will be doing your childcare when your maternity ends? Well, it depends. Um, so my parents have agreed to it. Like I spoke to them about it, obviously. Um, I, I didn't impose it upon them because, you know, as much as it's their grandchild, like they've done their raising of children, they're free to do what they want. Now my dad's retired, like do what you want. My ideal was half the week, parents half the week nursery just because he can like mingle with other people he can you know speak to other people see other people whatever whatever um but i don't want him to be mingling a nursery with all the, everything going on and then going to my parents and then coming here it's just a lot of like transfer of stuff so he's going to be with my parents full full time but i am working possibly going to be working from home and so is my husband so actually we might not even take him anywhere we're just going to keep him with us and then depending on like who's got meetings and who's got something like i guess a competing deadline in that moment of time we'll take him um and otherwise we'll just balance we'll just have to juggle it and balance it out he's 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 at the age now where he's very needy <laughs> so i'm not sure how it's gonna go um yeah i mean my parents are there if i need them do you want more kids inshallah god willing yes i do um ideally i say two or three that's not i that's just because of the world that we live in and i guess the lifestyle that i want i don't want to have so many kids that i can't do things i can't travel i can't you know live have space in a house i can't um just pick up get get up and go for a walk like there's a lot of things i don't i want to have a certain lifestyle and i don't think having five six kids is going to support that lifestyle so for me two or three would be fine um large enough but also small enough that i'm able to really focus on them give them the time they need give them the finances they need give them the support they need um i don't think i would be able to do that as well with five six seven kids as much as i love big families i don't think that's feasible and i think you have to be realistic with yourself like what kind of lifestyle do you want and how many kids match that up so i think two three max how did you become so disciplined this is a good question i, I was speaking to someone about this recently and um she was saying that she's a child psychologist and she was like, I've never seen anyone like you before in that, like how kind of disciplined you are and how dedicated you are to what you do. And I obviously have my down days, like what I show on Instagram and YouTube is obviously a highlight. But um, she was saying that there's something that your parents did 
to make you like that completely agree and looking back at it now i think my discipline definitely comes from the way that i was brought up it definitely comes from the way that my parents sort of instilled a um like an attitude which meant that we always feel like we could do anything um we'd wake up early in the morning the whole family would do that they definitely led by example so we'd sleep early we would never out of bed after like eight o'clock we were all asleep at eight o'clock or nine o'clock even until the age of like 15 16 like we were in bed at 10 o'clock didn't exist 11 o'clock didn't exist we were in bed at nine woke up at 6 a.m and that's just something that we all did as a whole family and they still do it now at home so i think like having that discipline has definitely come from like my parents and seeing them lead by example and seeing how motivated and how like disciplined they were and the things that they did and that's i'm hoping to kind of pass that on to my kids as well and that's one of the things i really hope that i'm able to do because it's so inspiring and it really made a big difference in the way that i am now as an adult what would your advice be on how not to worry about the future oh, i don't know you tell me i don't i don't know i always worry about the future um it's hard it's hard not to worry about the future i, I don't know i actually can't give you advice because it'd be disgenuine <laughs> however actually there is one way that i don't worry about the future it's when i think to myself like it's all in god's hands if you're believing in god or if you have a religion or a faith then the way that i see things is sort of you can do everything you want you can go down every single evidence-based path yet if something's not written it's not meant for you then it won't be and i think sometimes i just try to remind myself of that how easy or hard did you find the transition to motherhood oh my gosh i found it so difficult in the beginning um just because like i said i'm quite a selfish person in the sense that i'm quite ambitious and so everything that i do is to be a better me and so i found that like having a child meant that i couldn't do anything for those things and i couldn't i couldn't run a business i couldn't film i couldn't do work i couldn't whatever whatever and i couldn't do those things and so i found it really difficult but like i said it's more for selfish reasons so had i not had those ambitions i think i wouldn't have found it as difficult just because i would be like right this is kind of what i expect i expect to be sleepless i expect to have issues with i don't know sleeping and feeding whatever but i think because i had like that additional thing that's completely my that's completely me that's my fault i guess that's my issue um i found it difficult but now that i've settled in i find it actually it's actually absolutely fine oh and that's it that's something that, i don't know why i'm i don't know why i feel very hesitant saying this i feel like i don't know why i feel like a lot of people tend to bash not bash motherhood that's the wrong word but tend to complain about motherhood and i heard someone say this the other day saying that I'm not sure if I want to have a child because every mother that I speak to says how difficult it is and how much like she wishes she didn't have a child not in a bad way but you know like she wishes she had a freedom back and and she she's it's so stressful and it's so hard and she's like hearing all her mummy friends say that um has turned her off having a child and I was like oh my gosh that's so true everyone complains about having a child um obviously I know they, they come from a good place and they love their children whatever but I, right now when I was answering the question I felt a bit like should I be saying this should I be saying that it's not hard but it you know I think firstly it depends on your child every child's different like that's just the first you can't control that but secondly you know I think it's a choice that I chose to make like I chose to have a child and I chose to accept that difficulty and I think it's no difficult than I thought it was going to be the same way that I didn't think a PhD I thought a PhD would be as difficult as it was and so if you asked me if it, whether a PhD was difficult, I'd be like, oh no, it was alright, because it was at the level of difficulty that I expected it to be. Um, so yeah, I don't know, what do you guys think? If you're a parent, do you find it weird to say that your motherhood's okay? Like, it's actually not that bad. I never want to put anyone off being a mother, and I really hope that I show you guys that it's possible to be a mom, have a business, do a PhD, work, do education, have a wife, go out, have a wife, be a wife, go out, you know, whatever. Um, I really hope that I sh have shown you that so yeah do you regret not having a wedding ceremony no um, if you don't know I didn't have a wedding I just had like a small Islamic um, nikah and I also had the legal registry as well in um, the town hall with two people my dad and my sister as witnesses and yeah I mean honestly I don't care for that kind of stuff like it doesn't bother me these ceremonies don't legitimize or don't solidify your marriage we've seen many people that have got married with extravagant weddings that cost ridiculous amounts of money 
and haven't lasted like two years so for me it wasn't about the wedding it wasn't about the whole party like I don't really care for that um, in the same way like with a baby shower I never had a baby shower and all of those things a little bit showy more than actually enjoyable okay my little one my little angel just woke up so I'm gonna I might have you might hear some noise in the background <laughs> Okay, next one is interesting conversation topics with friends or family. Um, currently, we have a lot of conversation about investing, money, finances. Those are like the three things. And then the second thing is also like living abroad. So like most of my friends have kids now and are married and sort of that's like our next step. Our next step is sort of purchasing property, deciding on where we're living long term, um, kids <laughs> and that sort of thing, family. So those are like the main topics of things that we talk about um so yeah what do you miss the most pre-lockdown oh my God. don't talk to me about pre-lockdown i miss traveling this sounds very privileged um but i miss traveling because i feel like in i feel like i've seen my family more than i did before on facetime and we're in even more contact than we were before so i don't necessarily miss that side of things i do miss seeing them in person but we facetime like almost every single day and like, i don't feel like i miss them very much in that sense but i do miss travel oh my god i i used to travel since i started my phd so i think since like 2013 i've, I've traveled at least like three to four times in a year one big trip so like i went to australia or ethiopia or canada or like new york um, those are like big trips and then i'll do like europe trips so i love traveling i love it so much and the one regret i have in life now is that i didn't do more of it um because we just don't i don't know when we're going to be able to do it next and i had really hoped that in my mat leave i would have been able to travel with my son that was probably one of the things that i'm gonna that's probably one of the things that i'm gonna mourn for the rest of my life um again very privileged people have died i understand but um i think i you know i've always dreamt that when i had a child I would spend the whole year traveling with him, not the whole year, but like I'll travel with him. I'll go, you know, baby swimming. I'll go to baby classes in the library. I'll have like my mummy friends, <laughs> go to Westfield. Um, but I didn't manage to do a single thing and I'm back to work next month. So that's something that I'm definitely gonna mourn because even with my next mat leave, I'll have a child already. So I won't be able to do it as easily as I would have with him. Um, but you know, it is life, I think, we have to just say thank god for everything that we have we have our health we have our happiness we have our family and our friends and i think there are loads of things that i can complain about but there's also so many blessings that i can i have to remember and so um the blessings always over the blessings always outweigh the negatives Jan is right here underneath <laughs> um <laughs> would you rather have no eyebrows or no eyelashes for a year wait no eyebrows or no eyelashes no eyebrows i can just draw them back on eyelashes you have to like wear lashes and i've heard they're quite tricky so i'd rather just draw my eyebrows on that's fine <laughs> or i can draw my hijab really low which camera do you use to film and which editing software i use final cut pro to edit and my camera is the canon what is it eos 80d um amazing love it and i use the what lens is 18 to 55 millimeter lens I used to, back like when I, I don't know, two years ago, I used to use a G7X, um, Canon G7X Mark I. Um, amazing camera for beginner, I think it's really, really good, really worth it. But YouTube helped me purchase this camera um, like two years ago now. So yeah, I love it, it's really good. What are you most afraid of? To put in brackets, except losing a loved one. <laughs> um, I think I'm most afraid of the unknown. Like, I think, you know, there's some things that you know, you can lose a job, okay, that's, that's sad, that will be tragic. Um, you can lose something that you love. They're, they're all things that you know, but there's things that I don't know that are going to happen to me. And that's what I'm afraid of. Like, I'm afraid of what I don't know. Does that make sense? That's quite deep. Okay, so Pian, this is a deep conversation. You're moving my camera. <laughs> oh, what does a perfect day look like to you? Okay, I had a perfect day the other day. Go for a walk 10,000 steps. That means I got my fresh air. Nice. Um, so Fian gets all the time that he needs. So I get to read him a book. I get to play, his, play some games. I get to like, you know, have fun with him, give him a bath, whatever, whatever. Um, I get to do some work. So that could be filming, that could be editing, that could be applying to emails. Um, I hit my target of the amount of, the amount of money that I want to make every single day. 
So with the business, with the Page Doctor, we have a target, so we wanna have an income of a certain amount every day in order to hit um, a certain amount at the end of the year. So it's a good way for, if you have a business, it's a good way to kind of calculate things. Let's say you wanna make a million in a year, divide that by the number of days in the year or the number of days that you want to work and then that's how much you need to make every single day. So we've said, right, we wanna make 100K, six figures by the end of the year, how much do we need to make every single day? And we that's like our target. So once we've made that, we're now like, once we made that during the day, it's like, okay, cool, we're chilling now, we we're on target. Um, so like the other day, it happened at 12 o'clock at lunchtime, we were like, cool, all right, made what we need to make today, for the rest of the day, we're just chilling. So that was quite nice, that's like a perfect day for me. Um, just having a good balance, like having a balance between family, personal, social life, um, like, you know, going out, having a nice little walk, speaking to family, like just, just, just wholesome. Do you think 2,000 euros net per month is a good salary for a PhD student? So 2,000 euros, that's times for 24 euros. That's good, yeah, because I'm just trying to think of it in pounds. It's about the same, isn't it, now? Um, that's really good, yeah, it's amazing, actually. Um, but just consider, I'm not sure what country you're from. You, If you're taxed or not, in the UK, PhD stipend is not taxed, it's tax-free. So my PhD stipend was 20 two believe yeah it was 22 22.5 um so i got 22.5 the whole 22.5k in my pocket um whereas if i had got taxed then that would obviously end up being 16 17 whatever it is k that's that's great but also do consider that what your needs are so you might have to rent you might have to have like have a car whatever it is so i don't know what your needs are but for the most part um, that's a pretty high salary because there are parts in the UK where people get paid like 13, 14,000 pounds a year. Yeah. That's like a grand a month. So I think two, two, 2,000 euros is perfect. I'm going to end it there. Um, Sufyan's woken up and he wants me, so I'm going to go. But I've answered, I think, most of the questions. Some of them are quite samey, samey. But I hope that gave you some insight on some of my views, my opinions. If you have any other questions, then don't forget to leave it down below and I'll probably do maybe a part two in a month's time or so. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe, 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 subscribe. I'm trying to hit 200K by the end of the year. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Okay, bye.